Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sid and in today's video I'm going to be talking about the evolution of Drew Monson. Drew started making YouTube videos when he was 11 or 12 years old in 2007 under the username My Toe Cold. He named his channel that because he thought that his toes got colder than the rest of his foot. What is the story behind My Toe Cold? You know when you're in your house and your feet get cold. I always thought that your toes get colder than the rest of your feet. And people were immediately drawn to Drew because he would just say whatever came to his mind and many people did consider him a comedic genius. His early content consisted of prank calls, music reviews and just a whole bunch of random stuff and all the while he was constantly fighting accusations that he was a girl. Is this a a guy or a girl and these people are mean i understand there's been some confusion lately on whether i'm a male or a female and over the years he's even put confirmations in his youtube bios that he is in fact a boy and even more than that he went out in public and interviewed people about whether or not they thought he was a girl or a boy am i a boy or a girl i'd say you're a girl okay <laughs> you're a girl okay thank you I'm a boy. You are? I think you're a boy or a girl. I yeah. think you're a girl. You do? Yeah. Why, why would you say that? Because your voice sounds like it. Oh, well guess what? I'm a boy. Okay, then I'm a girl. Yes, you were comedic genius, right? He started off making videos by himself, but he eventually incorporated his family members, like his mother, his sister, and his grandma. And the reason why he supposedly started making videos was for attention. What, what prompted you to first start putting yourself on YouTube? Uh, in general, I wanted attention. <laughs> and... <laughs> what a good, solid answer. Well, that, that, yeah, well, true. people always talk about YouTube and they go like, I just showed it to my friends and like, then it took off. But I think people aren't really being honest when they say that. Like, I made videos because I wanted people to see them and I wanted I wanted them to be popular but like people always talk about it like I showed my brother and then somehow it got a thousand somehow. views no, <laughs> like, that was a good honest answer but he remained a fairly unknown channel for quite some time from 2007 to 2013 his channel grew fairly slowly before settling at 45,000 subscribers and that is when everything changed for him he got a massive surge of attention in 2014 when he starred alongside the big youtuber Shane Dawson in the movie not cool and that basically came about because Shane was one of the 45,000 people who recognized Drew before he blew up. I found him on the internet when he was, this is not going to help my allegations. I found him on the internet when he was 11. <laughs> no, he was making comedy videos and I think he made a video response to one of my videos or something. And I watched it and I was like, this kid's a genius. Early on in Drew's YouTube journey, Shane struck up an online friendship with him. He would comment on Drew's videos and he's tweeted at him a whole bunch of times. Shane had a very inappropriate sense of humor and Drew was at the receiving end of that in a few tweets when Drew was just a child and Shane was an adult. But those tweets might have shown him what to expect in the movie because not only did he star alongside Shane but Shane directed it. In addition to the movie a reality show was capturing the process of the movie being made and that reality show was called The Chair. It basically showcased two directors one of them being Shane, make a movie out of the same movie prompt. Drew appeared in the reality show, but he was more significant in the movie. But yeah, the movie that Shane directed was just as gross as the tweets that he sent Drew, to the point where the producer of the chair, Zachary Quinto, wanted his name removed from it entirely. So Zach may have wanted to remove his name from the movie, but the way that Drew actually got into the movie was because he asked Shane if he could be a part of it. David asked, what was the auditioning process like? Um, I, kind, I mean, okay, I kind of asked Shane to be in the movie because he told me he was doing this movie and I like messaged him on Facebook. I was like, should I do this? But I was like, I want to be in this movie. I think I could do it. And Drew received one of the raunchiest roles. I mean, I don't really want my grandma to watch it because it's so dirty and I say, I say, the most disgusting things out of everyone in the movie. It's a very raunchy film. And I don't know if, if, if my grandma's ready for that. But being in a movie that was shunned by TV royalty didn't hinder his momentum. Being associated with Shane and Not Cool caused his YouTube channel to explode. He was able to consider YouTube more of a job instead of something that he just did for attention 
or fun. And to make the most out of the momentum, he moved to Los Angeles just a few months after the movie came out in January 2015 at 19 years of age. At that point, he had also introduced us to his turtle, Rodeo Jones. You guys have been noticing my little turtle back here swimming around, seeing some comments about it. Hi, little buddy. This is Rodeo Jones. Thanks for watching. Rodeo Jones. He is a red-eared slider that could often be seen swimming around in the background of his videos. If you look close enough, you can see that he has a basking area, but many people don't see it and often criticize Drew for how he looks after him. Much like the questions about whether or not he was a girl or a boy, he was often addressing the comments about Rodeo Jones. My turtle is a red-eared slider. She has a basking area. I know you can't see it, but she has it and she loves it. Her tank is not chock full of a bunch of different things. She doesn't need a bunch of different things. She needs the swimming area. I've had her for 13 years. If you have any other problems with her, tell it to the turtle judge. As much as Rodeo was a point of controversy at times, for Drew, most people understood and loved seeing him in the background. He was soon cemented as a part of Drew's brand, and whenever he released merch, Rodeo would always make an appearance on it. Even though that was the case, a lot of people expected him to rehome Rodeo when he moved to LA, but that was the last thing that he wanted to do, and he brought him to LA with him. Drew's love for Rodeo may not have changed when he moved to LA, but that is when his content on YouTube started to shift. Previously, aside from a few appearances from his family members, he was pretty much a one-man show, but when he moved to LA, a lot of his content consisted of collaborations and viral challenges and tag videos. Most of his collabs were with Shane, but he was able to tap into Shane's other YouTuber friends and do collabs with them as well. People loved their videos together. Their collabs are Drew's most popular videos. They had good chemistry, and it seemed as though Shane was really the only one who was able to keep up with Drew's humor. Eventually, a strong group formed between Shane, Drew, and Shane's friend, Trisha Paytas. They all became friends and then named their friend group STD. In their content together, they would film vlogs, make stuff, and do challenges. And that was a combination that Drew's viewers came to know and love. Outside of that, Shane helped Drew expand his portfolio once again. He allowed Drew to be a guest co-host on his podcast, Shane and Friends. He did it one time in the early days of the podcast in 2015, and then he did it 18 more times in the later days of the podcast. He would be involved in the conversations and and ask questions to the guests that they would have on the show. And he would sing and play the keyboard that he had. But yeah, he stopped doing that when the podcast ended. He also joined forces with Shane again to make spooky content where they would go explore haunted things or do haunted or cursed stuff. They were also joined by another one of Shane's friends, Garrett Watts, and together they were called the Spooky Boys. And that was another group that their fans loved to watch together. Eventually, Drew stopped appearing in the Spooky Boys videos, but those kinds of videos on Shane's channel did continue on, but with different people. And yeah, that leads me to the next part of this video, which is talking about another notable part of his YouTube journey, and that is his many disappearances. Drew would often vanish from the internet without warning. His breaks ranged anywhere from a couple of months to a year and a half. That sort of increasing pattern was first noticed in 2016 when Drew's uploads started to become more infrequent. His videos went from being a weekly thing to a bi-weekly thing to a monthly thing. But in one of the videos that he was uploading sparingly, he talked openly and honestly about his depression and how it was affecting his uploading schedule. Even Shane provided him with some support so that he was able to put an upload out. Shane's here because when I try to make a video by myself, I cry, so. <laughs> but it's good to have friends. That's why it's good to have friends. But after that video, Drew pretty much disappeared for six months. By that point, his fans had become accustomed to his irregular uploads, but this was the first time that he had taken a prolonged break. When he returned in June 2017, he made a video explaining why he left while doing a dollar store haul. He says that it is sometimes just scary to post videos, and that he stopped posting because Donald Trump was elected as the president. Um, I totally, like, left the internet completely for, like, 
six, five or six months, I think. Um, when Trump became president, I kind of just became confused with the world and my place in it and what I should talk about. And I just kind of chickened out and I was like, I didn't say anything. But after that, there was just a short spurt of four videos. One of the videos was a music video directed by Shane titled My Comeback. And then Shane joined him in another video as a support. I'll be honest, why why aren't you in the mood sometimes to make videos? Sometimes I turn on the camera. Oh my god, I can show you a little clip. Oh no. <laughs> so this is me trying to make a YouTube video when I don't feel like it. Oh my god, are you crying? Drew. <laughs> Oh my god, what's happening? <laughs> but then after that, he vanished again. He then returned after three months with an I'm Back video. He appeared in a few videos with Christine Sidelko, where they played Sims together. That was the extent of his online presence for about a month, because after that, he disappeared again. He went through another three extended absences and returns. I've left YouTube again, and I'm back again for like the 10th time. As much as his fans would have loved for him to continue uploading, they understood that he needed to take these breaks for his mental health. And during his break between January and November 2018, he made a Tumblr post. In that post, he said that he was confident that he would no longer be making any content online because it wasn't healthy for him. He did later delete that Tumblr post, but many of his fans believed that was the end of his YouTube. There were a handful of Drew sightings during this time in other people's videos, which gave people some hope that he would someday return. Drew's compilations are gold though. Yours always get a million. So if you're going to do a compilation, do it on Drew. Have a million? Yeah, the one that you talked about in that one. Yeah, tell me the one is Drew Monson okay because that one has like a million views now. Drew <laughs> Monson okay? Kind of, not really. <laughs> He did return in November and addressed the Tumblr post. The post said something like, I'm not going to be on social media anymore, like I'm done with this, it's making me sad. But the truth is, I took that off because I didn't agree, agree with it anymore. But now it lives there, like that decision in my life to post that lives there forever and seems like my present thought. And then during an absence in 2020, his friend Shane was cancelled for a bunch of stuff that he had done in the past. Then Trisha Paytas, Drew and Shane's other friend, turned on Shane. And when she did that, she exposed that Shane had a falling out with Drew and a bunch of his other friends. Because that's just been Shane's mentality with every single friend. And I've gone through friend groups too, so I really hate that like argument. Like, he goes through so many friends and I'm just like, yeah, he does. But do you ever, like, you guys don't hear this, but he never, it's always the other person. He's falling out with Andrew, he's falling out with Drew. Garrett, um, it's always like the other person. As I'm sure you're all aware, Trisha lies a lot, so definitely take what she says with a grain of salt. But regardless of if it was true or not, it caused a lot of people, including myself, to take a closer look at Shane and Drew's friendship to see why they may have had a falling out. Shane's treatment of Drew was a big topic of discussion and a lot of specific instances of disrespect were brought up. One instance was when they were doing a video for Drew's channel and Shane was pressuring Drew to drink alcohol before he was 21 in it. And if it tastes okay, you, you should swallow it. It's not going to. Are you kidding me? I'm not having rum chata. Why? It sounds like a bad board game. You know what? I'm actually gonna Google it right now. I want to make sure you can't get drunk because I don't want to get drunk. You don't get drunk from that. Take no, I just want to make sure. Can you get drunk? Let me see what the suggestions are. Okay. You can't get affected by something if it's just in your mouth. I'm but gonna leave. Yeah, remember when we went to BevMo and I'm only Ooh. 20? Oh, I'm so excited. Which one? Can I tell you which one you should do? I don't like that you're so excited to change me. Wait, okay. Do you guys have friends like this? Okay, wait. Are you putting all of that in your mouth? Is that like a normal amount? No, I can't. I'm just gonna put it a little tiny bit. No. Sit no! What if I start getting scared and I accidentally swallow it? Wait, mm. switch it around. It's burning up my mouth! <laughs> wait, oh, because this is a cinnamon one? I feel bad about myself. Wait. <laughs> it's no. okay. You're fine, you're fine. Oh. Are you crying? You're crying. No, no! Yes, no. you are. Why are no, you crying? I, I don't know. Oh my god, is this emotionally I... triggering? Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah. Mm. I'm gonna go. <laughs> are you gonna choke me? I don't know, I'm just scared right now. After they received backlash for it, Drew edited out the parts of Shane pressuring him, and a whole bunch of other moments surfaced as well. There was a moment when Shane spat on Drew, there were a whole bunch of moments that Shane was just mean to Drew, and many moments where he was also just inappropriate with him. You just... <laughs> That's one of the 
neatest things you can do. That's like the scene in the movie where it's like, I can't believe he did that. I wish I was attracted to you though, because I could, I could turn you. I could buy you something. I'm telling you I'm not interested in you. I know, but I could change that. No, you couldn't. Yeah, you're young. So tonight when I floss... You don't floss. I floss all the time. No, no, no. My hair is not greasy right It's now. not. This it's is not. I'm kidding. We never heard from Drew about how he felt about all of that, but what we do know is that they did stop making content together and Drew hasn't mentioned Shane in many, many years. A friend of Drew's that hasn't been accused of bullying him is Christine Sidelko. She discovered Drew through his is I was threatened meme. She saw it on Twitter and then she interacted with Drew a bit on there. They followed each other on there and then out of nowhere, Drew slid into her DMs asking to hang out. I was bored and he texted or he DM'd me out of nowhere and he was like, what are you doing tonight? And I was like, uh, nothing. And he goes, and we made plans to hang out and he was going to come over. But then he goes, <clears throat> he goes, um, oh, really quick. Um, how many videos of mine have you seen? And I was like, um, like two? And he goes, oh, okay, I just want to make sure you weren't like a crazy fan. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, I mean, we can just be friends. And he was like, okay, so he came over. They became friends and started hanging out from time to time. And while they were hanging out in May 2017, Christine filmed a video on Snapchat of Drew smoking a cigarette. Hey, you boys gonna give me a show or what? You gonna give me a show? Or what? And while there wasn't really any backlash against Drew for this, it was a pretty big surprise to his fans. Drew had a very innocent and wholesome persona on YouTube, and him being scared to drink alcohol with Shane is a big example of that. So yeah, him smoking a cigarette was a little bit unexpected. During that time, he did want to keep it private that he was experimenting with things like that. In an episode on Shane's podcast, Shane brings up how Drew smoked weed with Jesse, the other podcast co-host, and Drew did not want Shane bringing that up. Wait, so wait, Drew, you have met Jess because you guys smoked weed together. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I literally was about to hand you a paper that said what I don't want to talk about, and it had weed and Tinder written on it. I'm so sorry, do you want, to, do you want me to He start just wanted me to do it. I just don't really want to talk oh, about no, it. Oh, no, no. In the video of him smoking a cigarette, you can see him hide the cigarette, and you can hear him faintly say, you can't show this. And then in January 2019, he does address that video of him smoking. He talked about why he started smoking cigarettes and why he wanted to hide it from his viewers. The reason I haven't talked about it before, because it's not that interesting, and also I don't want to like inspire somebody to smoke cigarettes because the reason, literally this is so sad, the reason I smoke cigarettes is because like I saw pictures of all my favorite musicians smoking cigarettes and I was like, that looks cool. He also says this. I smoke cigarettes. And I'm actually going to smoke one for the rest of this. I'm just kidding. What if I literally turned into that guy that's like, so anyway. Cole Sprouse is basically that guy. But to be honest, when you're in a relationship for that long, and someone leaves. So thanks Drew for not becoming that. Anyway, Drew and Christine then announced a potential tour in February 2018. I am going on tour, I'm pretty sure, with my friend Christine Sidelko. First they had to gauge interest and get fans to request what cities they wanted them to come to so they knew where to go on the tour. Enough fans requested and a 10 stop tour was confirmed in May 2018. The show that they would do on tour was to go for 30 minutes and everyone who attended would receive a meet and greet. They hadn't worked out exactly what they would do during the show, but they were selling tickets, the contract had been signed and it was going to happen. Just a couple of weeks after it had been announced, Drew posted a notes app apology on Twitter. He said that he wouldn't be able to go on tour because he was getting help for various things. And yeah, ever since then, they haven't made content together. Drew did reference Christine recently as a friend, so it does appear as though they are still on good terms. But yeah, Drew just doesn't make much content with other people anymore, and Christine also kind of deleted herself from the internet, so 
There's also that. So yeah, after getting help for the various things that he needed help for, he returned to the internet for about a year. He was posting fairly consistently and the first big thing that he did in terms of content during his return was create a podcast with his grandma. She had been a recurring person in his content and they had even done stand-up comedy together. Their dynamic was another dynamic that his fans came to know and love. The podcast that they started together was was called Drew and Drew's Grandma. And Drew made a second channel to upload the video version of the podcasts onto. Welcome, Welcome to, to the Drew and Drew's Grandma, Grandma YouTube channel. channel. Oh, yes, yeah. perfect. No, I didn't. I missed it, messed up. They'll love it. It's natural. Guys, welcome to the YouTube channel. In the podcast, they talked about life and pretty much just whatever came to their minds. Drew's grandpa even made an appearance in the fourth episode, and that fourth episode was actually the last episode. Drew did continue posting to YouTube, but he just stopped the podcast. A year later, he did explain that he stopped because of depression. By the way, some people might be wondering about our podcast. That doesn't happen. It didn't happen. I know. I messed up. I stopped doing them because I was getting, I go in and out of this depression thing and I'm bad at being consistent and that's pretty much the answer. Something else that he did during his year long return was release an EP. Music has been a big part of his online presence since the beginning. Like I said at the start of the video, some of his most earliest content was music review videos. And on top of that, he would always make a little song to put at the end of his videos. And his 2019 EP was not the first time he had released music. In 2018, he released an album titled The Pop He Faked. And that all came about because in 2011, he made a separate YouTube channel that wasn't going to focus on comedy. It would instead focus on his music. So for a year or two now, I've been writing and recording um, a songs, original songs, and I really enjoy it and I really like it. And I've been kind of scared to show people because so far in my life, I've only, oh my God, I've only shown people the creative things I've made that were like for making people laugh, and this is more serious. I mean, it's, it's lighthearted. It's not like about killing yourself or anything, but it's it's um, it's not supposed to be funny, you know. So um, I thought I would finally show uh, you guys, the viewers at home. The channel was called The Pop He Fakes. He posted a bunch of music on that channel, and then later compiled it into an album that he released in 2018. Hello. Friends, hello foes, I have news. I put all of my The Pop He Fakes music into an album. Since then he's released some singles and a couple of albums and he's also made a couple of music videos as well. And then in 2021 he renamed the Drew and Drew's Grandma podcast channel to Drew Monson number two. He started posting content on that channel that was similar to his main channel content but it was just a lot longer and a lot less edited. And he was consistently posting on that channel for about a year. He's gone on a bit of a break from that channel at the moment, but when he was posting on there, a notable thing that he did was post a collab video. In 2022, he posted a video where he was joined by the YouTuber a dubs. And that was something that stood out because the last time he had done a collab was in 2018. In an Instagram post where he was announcing the joint video, he said that he had sworn off collabs. He also said that his nightmare would be if he sat down in a movie theater and videos where he was with other people started playing. He elaborated on all of that a little bit more in the actual video that he did with A-dubs. I cannot watch, my, it is so, I'm not gonna watch this video. And I'm so glad that I don't edit them because when I used to make collaborations where we'd test pizzas or whatever, mm -hmm. we, when I would edit those videos, it's like when you're making a video with someone else, I would always think about this, it is so hard not to be yourself because I feel like all, my insecurities come out more so than when I'm even just alone, which they do when someone else is there. And you can see my neediness sometimes. He also later spoke on it more, talking about how he wasn't fully equipped to handle making that sort of content when he moved to LA. When you're a YouTuber, especially at that time for me, your friends are also like your coworkers. And that balance can get really emotionally confusing. And also just the balance between what my real life was and what was becoming like this TV show Show that I was a part of because I'm in this person's video, they're in my video, and it's just like this collection of very popular 
shows. And looking back, it was a little bit messy and it was a little bit scary for me. Like none of it's the worst thing that could ever happen to somebody, but it was enough to knock a sensitive person like me on their face. I will just say overall, I was just not fully equipped to handle everything that was going on. And getting into collabs wasn't the only thing that he was introduced to when he moved to LA. He was also introduced to drugs. Drew recently spoke in a video about how he became addicted to weed, cigarettes, alcohol, and prescription pills. I'm nervous. No, I'm, um, I'm a drug addict. Uh, and an alcoholic. And before that, he was so sure that he would never touch any sort of drug. And he didn't touch anything until he was 20. Basically, it all started when he told his friend that he wasn't sleeping very well, so they gave him a very strong sleeping pill. After that, he wanted more, and he asked all of his friends if they had any of those pills. None of his friends had any of it, so he started smoking weed. And not just smoking it, he also started eating it and inhaling it from a vape. And after doing weed and finding some sort of benefit in it, he got a medical marijuana card. And four years after that, he was pretty much high all of the time. For the next like three or four years, I was high all of the time. Like if you met me during that period, I was either high or I was high because I had been so high recently, it hadn't worn off. He then got addicted to prescription pills and cigarettes. And he was able to get access to the prescription pills because he had a history of mental illness that he had been medicated for. So he was able to tap into that again to easily get the pills. But things started to get bad when he was mixing all of the medications together and he was having psychotic breaks and complete blackouts. But yeah, it was bad. I was mixing all of it as much as I could. I basically would have like three or four or five different controlled substance uh, medications going at once at the pharmacy and they would refill at different times of the month. And I would use smoking to just hold me over until I got what I really wanted. So his friends and family had some serious conversations with him about going to rehab. He was resistant at first, but he ultimately decided to go in mid 2018. When he got out of rehab, a month later, he had no money left, so he moved back to Modesto, California with his family. He returned to YouTube and then made enough money to be able to move out of his family's house in mid-2019. Then in November 2019, he got into alcohol. I heard about seltzers and I was like, oh, this will just taste like soda or whatever. And within like three months, I was drinking between 16 and 20 hard seltzers a day. But a year later, he stopped drinking on his own. So yeah, I stopped drinking on my own very, very slowly. I should have gone to rehab, but I didn't. My entire relationship to alcohol lasted about a full year. I don't miss it at all, and I never want to have it again. In 2022, he did start doing weed again, and that gave him a lot of anxiety, so then he got addicted to anxiety medication. But fortunately, that only lasted three to four months. But yeah, after Drew revealed all that, it definitely shed a new light on some of the choices that he's made. He brought up how, yes, his disappearances were to do with his mental health, but it was also because he was getting very high and very drunk. But I always leave out the fact that I was getting very high and very drunk. He also talked about how in some of his past videos, he was partially blacked out or completely blacked out. He also explained how his addiction ruined the tour that he and Christine were going to go on because he had to go to rehab. In, I think, 2018, I'd agreed to go on a tour with my friend Christine. We did take promo pictures. And I just remember I was in my room and all of a sudden I just saw a man that I didn't know. I started knocking on all of my neighbor's doors and saying, help me, help me, there's a man in my room. I basically just like had a psychotic break. So yeah, I canceled the tour. I posted a vague notes app update on my Twitter feed. Oh, and he has also quit smoking. So yeah, now Drew has released a new album and he is sparingly posting on YouTube still, but he's more active on his Patreon. Anyway, that is pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next one.